Segundo os amigos, foi a sua tentativa de recuperar a infância perdida que originou a sua obsessão por Peter Pan. O ensinador Trevor Nunn conheceu Michael nos anos 80, quando Michael lhe pediu ajuda na preparação de uma nova digressão. Quando eu estava falando sobre o tipo de staging que eu fiz no show called Starlight Express, ele disse que é tão mais o tipo de coisa que eu quero fazer. Eu quero fazer algo diferente. Eu quero poder voar sobre a audiência. And I said, um, that's not a problem. I, I was kind of bantering, I suppose. Uh, no, there's, there's no difficulty. I, I had people flying over the audience when I did Peter Pan. And it was like I had pressed a button that would give him uh, an electric shock. Um, everything changed. Um, he sat bolt upright. He grabbed the arms of the chair. Uh, he said, you did Peter Pan? I, I said, yeah, yeah, I, I, I directed it in, in London. Oh, my God, oh, my God, you directed Peter Pan. And, and the excitement was just overwhelming. He jumped up, he walked around the room, he kept repeating, Peter Pan, oh, my God, Peter Pan. And then I explained to him that we had done the show in London using adult actors to play the children. And that took it one stage further because suddenly he was like with her eyes brim full with tears and he came across the room and he knelt down in front of me and he grabbed my knees and he said, could I play Peter Pan? Is it too late for me to play Peter Pan? It was just the two of us in this huge room. Um, and I, I've since wondered, well, well, how often could he reveal that? childlike part of himself and the the discussion about Peter Pan um, not only released it but I think it showed me that it was not so much a part that he wanted to play it was the person he wanted to be À medida que a amizade entre ambos se fortalecia, Uri viria a descobrir o lado infantil de Michael. Uma segunda visita a Uri, no Reino Unido, estava já a ser planeada e incluía uma noite a fazer compras no Harrods. E uma visita privada ao Parlamento. Depois de Michael Jackson ser padrinho de casamento de Uri em 2001, a amizade entre os dois tornou-se ainda maior. Costumavam falar frequentemente ao telefone. Mais de uma vez discutiram a proposta feita por um entusiasta americano do espaço. I got an email from a scientist, an engineer that worked in Boeing with ties to NASA. And I don't know the conversation started uh, between me and him that it is no matter how far out this sounds and how science fiction it sounds, sounds that it was possible to get Michael Jackson to the moon. And I relayed this to Michael. And Michael was extremely ecstatic about it. He was so excited just by, I mean, the idea of, of, of him being able to actually do his moonwalk on the moon. And I remember, I mean, it was really, to me, it was an impossibility, but the flicker, uh, the hope that it could happen was there because these emails were coming from a scientist. At three o'clock in the morning, Michael Jackson left me a message on my answer phone. Yuri Geller is Michael Jackson calling. Um, when you get this message, please know that I, I wish, I pray that we do the moon trip. I want to be the first one to do it in the pop world. And uh, now I hear that NSYNC and all these people are trying to go. I want to be first, please. And uh, let's do hands across England. This was so sweet, you know, it was so timid, it was so naive, it was so gullible, it was so beautiful and gentle that I, I had to, to keep, I didn't want to erase the message. 
I mean, I listened to it over and over and over again. You see, Michael Jackson believed in the impossible. Alguns meses depois, a superestrela regressava ao Reino Unido para visitar Uri. Com a autorização de Michael, todos os passos da visita foram gravados pelo seu amigo. You see, these, uh, the, these scenes, these moments, uh, co conjures up religion. Uh, it conjures up God. Uh, it, this, is, this is kind of, on, on a different plane, uh, this is like, these people, these fans, looked at Michael almost like a Jesus. O ilusionista David Blaine, um amigo de Yuri, juntou-se a eles. A primeira paragem foi no Parlamento, a convite de um outro amigo de Yuri, Lord Greville Jenner. Michael really loved that sculpture, but come on, that's been there probably for hundreds of years. He couldn't take that home. My feelings here, going into the Parliament with Michael Jackson, were simply uh, bizarre. Uh, that, that's the only word I can, I can say. Really freaky, the whole thing, but but it was meaningful. It was important. It was power. It was kind of credibility. You see, Michael Michael wanted to to he wanted the Queen to honor him. He really did want that very much. That was one thing that really was in Michael's heart. Why did you want to come and visit Parliament? Is it my wonderful friends or Jen? <laughs> Yeah. He's a politician as well. And to educate me about this whole incredible thing. <laughs> you know, when Michael heard that Steven Spielberg got a knighthood, um, Michael wanted a knighthood okay. too. And I understand, come on, he should have gotten a knighthood, really. But it, it was impossible to achieve. And um, we spoke about that quite a lot in the Parliament. There were moments where, uh, without filming, he kind of whispered to me, is the Queen here? Are we going to meet the Queen? Michael Jackson had a magical status wherever he went, even in Parliament. Now, he came on a Friday, and there were no parliamentarians there. And the staff and everybody who met him treated him with much more joy and respect and amazement than they ever do any of the members of either House of Parliament. He was a, a rare and wonderful visitor. So I took Michael through the House of Commons, and he sat down. And I said to him, hey, Michael, you, you can't sit here. Only elected people can sit in the House of Commons. He looked very bemused, because it must be the only place in the world he's ever been told he couldn't sit down. 